Awesome. Are y'all ready for the word? Yeah. Open up your Bibles yeah. to Matthew 6. And this morning, I just want to teach a little bit on where is your heart? Matthew 6, 19, it says, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So this morning, I just want to ask you, where is your heart? Because if we're storing treasures here on earth, we cannot take our cars and our houses and our shoes and our clothes to heaven. Amen. They're all great. We get to enjoy them here on earth. But ultimately, what is it that we can take to heaven? Awesome, guys. You all know. <laughs> what can we take to heaven? What can we present to God? And that's souls. Souls, amen, those impacted by the gospel, those that got saved by the gospel because your heart was towards the things of heaven and not the things of earth, that because you gave, because you gave, you know, and, and sometimes when we talk about giving immediately, we get uncomfortable. What you love, you'll give to. It doesn't make you uncomfortable to give when you love. I love my husband, and by the way, I got you good gifts this year. Give me some credit. <laughs> but, you know, some of us, we love our cars. And I grew up with brothers, so I grew up around cars a lot. But we love our cars, and we'll spend time and hours out there. Doesn't matter how hot it is. It doesn't matter how expensive the part is. It doesn't matter where you have to go to go get it. You'll do whatever is necessary. Amen? Talking to some people today. Y'all don't look at your neighbor and say she's talking to you. Now I'm talking to you. <laughs> but whatever we love, we'll do whatever is necessary to be able to pour into that. And see, we have to check our heart. Where is our heart? What do we love? Because we can say we love God with our words all we want, but if our actions are not corresponding, then guess what? You're only deceiving yourself. And so the Bible says, don't store up your treasures here on earth where moths come in, where rust destroys, where thieves break in and steal. Don't build your kingdom here on earth. It says store up your treasures where? In heaven. Because wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. So many times, you know, okay. we cannot allow the things of this world to capture our heart. God does want your obedience. You know, so many times you say, well, all I have to do is get saved and I don't have to do anything else. That's a deception from the pit of hell. I'm going to tell you right now because every scripture says, if you will. If you do. So there's something that we have to do. Amen. And part of our giving is knowing where our heart is attached. Where is your heart attached? Because what the Bible says that whatever we need, God already knows. He knows what we need. You know, when, when Jesus was out in the, and preaching to the multitude, there was a need. There was a need. The people were hungry, and there was no H-E-B close by. There was no barbecue place close by. None of that was close by. They were in the middle of the wilderness, and there was a multitude of people that had a need, but Jesus already had the answer. And so when the little boy came, he had to give. 
He could have ran to the corner and ate it all. <laughs> but because he gave, there was a multiplication miracle that happened. See, the Bible does not change. When you have a need, there is a seed that will meet that need. You have to hear what God is speaking and begin to do what he's commanded you to do. Sometimes we're, we're asking God for the miracle, but we don't want to do what he's told us to do. I'll tell you what, most of the time that I'm in need, that I have a situation going on, there's always a seed that he'll tell me to plant. Well, pastor, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is pray, pray. As I'm praying, I am hearing what he's telling me to do because as I obey the voice of God, my answer is in that obedience. So where's your heart? What are you giving to constantly? And you know, I, I do believe God wants to love on you and he wants to bless you, but he wants to make sure that your heart is not attached to all those things, but your heart is attached to him. He is the blesser. He is the giver. He is a provider. He wants your heart. He wants your affections. Amen? And so what do we do? You know, somebody who says in a marriage, and I'm just going to use this example, I give to my husband because he loves me. And because he's poured that love upon me, I can give and love freely to him. See, Jesus has poured this love upon you. And when you understand this love, when you comprehend the love of God upon your life, you have no problem giving. And I'm not talking just giving your finances. I'm talking in every area. When you get that call at 2 in the morning that you got to go to the hospital and pray for somebody, but you're so exhausted, you give. Why? Because the love of God is in you. When he, you're walking down the street and the Lord says, you know, bless that person with food. Or when you're in the line at HEB and he says, go back, pick up extra things for so-and-so. You have no problem. Why? Because you love. You love. You are so in love with Jesus that whatever he says to you, you want to do it. Why? Because love causes you to move. Love captivates you and it causes you to do something. I can say, you know, I love my husband, I love my husband. But if I do nothing to show that love, he will doubt that my love for him. If I never tell him, if I never show him. See, and many of us are sitting in church saying, I love God. I love God. But we're building our own kingdom. We're doing everything for ourselves. If, if it doesn't fit me, if it makes me uncomfortable, then don't ask me to do it. That's not love. Love gives. It gives away. And, you know, I, I know this, this makes people uncomfortable, but God didn't tell me to make you comfortable. <laughs> I'm not here to preach to make you feel good. I'm here to say what God has told me to say, amen, and I will not deviate from that. I am going to do what God's told me to do. I don't care. <laughs> I love you, but I don't care if you like me or not. That doesn't matter. I am telling you what the word of God says. Amen. Why? Because there's transformation in the word. The word comes in and it changes you. It doesn't leave you the same. Yes, God wants you just the way you are, but he doesn't leave you just the way you are. He changes you. There's a transformation that happens in your heart. You begin to heal from those wounds and things of the past. See, I need Jesus every day. I need him every day. I need him more today than I did yesterday, and I'm going to need him again tomorrow. Why? I don't want to walk this life without my Savior. But in walking this life, I have to hear what he's saying and be obedient to what he's telling me to do. How many times have you received, you know, you receive something... And you get so excited. And then you're sitting in church. And the Lord's saying, give it to this person. Anybody been there? Raise your hand if you have. Come on. Be real. Oh, but I was just praying for this. 
can he trust you? Because the Bible says when you're faithful with the little, he'll make you ruler over much. See, if you can't even be faithful with what's in your hands today, you won't be faithful with what God wants to put in your hands tomorrow. Hallelujah. Go with me to verse 33. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live. Everybody say live. Live. Righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. You cannot live according to the ways of the world and expect God to bless you. You cannot be in darkness and expect the light to give you everything. I know many of you are looking at me like, The Bible says live righteously. As you are seeking God, live righteously. Seek after him and live for him. You cannot be bitter. You cannot be angry. You cannot be walking in unforgiveness. You can't be criticizing. You can't be judging. You can't be doing all those things because those are work. That's the work of iniquity, the work of darkness. Amen. You are a child of light. And as a child of light, you have to live according to the ways of God. Love has to come into your heart and flow right through you. If you have issues going on and you're not receiving the answers to your prayers, God does not change. We have to look at ourselves. What are we doing that is hindering from that response? What are we doing with our life? What are our words saying? What are our actions doing? Some of us have to be delivered from our face. (laughs) Amen? Because we know how to make some expressions. Especially me. (laughs) Pastor, pray for me. I need deliverance. (laughs) True. (laughs) He said it's called makeup. (laughs) But where is your heart? What are you pouring into? Where are you building? You know, it's great to have things here on earth, but don't ever let those things have you. When the rich young ruler came to Jesus, he said, you know, what, what must I do? What, what do I need to do? I just, you know, I've done all these things. He wanted to justify his righteousness. And what did Jesus say? Sell everything that you have and come follow me. He couldn't do it. Why? Because those things had him. Those riches had him. Yeah, you know, he was following the commandments. Yeah, he was honoring his mother and father. Yeah, you might be coming to church. Yeah, you might be, you know, helping here and there. But where is your heart? Where is your heart? What has captivated your heart? Has the kingdom of God captivated your heart? Is your heart after the souls, amen? Is your heart after sending the evangelist to go preach fire, to go save souls? Where is your heart? Because you know what? Money works for you. You don't work for money. Let me say that again. Money works for you. You have authority over the money. It does not control you. It does not dictate you. Why? Because you come from heaven, amen? You have access to spiritual resources that only God can do. He's the God of multiplication. He's the God of the supernatural. But you have to come and present When we need a miracle, we need to give God something to work with. What did he tell, I think it was Moses, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? Pastor, I have nothing. No, God's given you everything. What do you have? Amen? See, because we can look at our situation. We can look at our bank account. We can say we don't have enough. We don't have enough. You keep saying that. You keep looking at that. You'll never have enough. Amen? But when you take your eyes off of that and put it back on Jesus, put it back on truth, then he'll begin to show you what you actually have. And when he begins to show you what you actually have, now you can give what you have. See, for a long time, we were, in a, we were in a very, very tight situation, years. 
And I always felt like I had nothing to give. I would hear, you know, these stories and people would come say, pray for me. I'm going through this and I'm going through that. And I always wanted to say, man, if I just had it, Lord, I'd, I'd give it to them. And I would always look at myself and say, I don't have. But as I begin to pray, the Lord began to show me what I do have. And how many of you have received a hug from me? The Lord began to use me to bring healing as I embrace those. He began to show me that what he had given me, I was able to give to others. Amen. See, everybody has something to give. It might not look like your neighbor's thing. And that's okay because God wants to use you, amen? He wants to use you in a certain area, but your heart has to be attached to heaven. God has to have your heart. If it's uncomfortable to give, that's because finances really have you. I said it over here where the pastors are at so they can give me an amen at least. (laughs) Hallelujah. What are you seeking after? What's your purpose? What's your vision? Is it just to buy you more stuff? Is it just to get more stuff? The Bible says don't accumulate things here on earth. Build in heaven. Some of you have so many things in your closet. And then you're going through it, I have nothing to wear. I need new clothes. I need new shoes. I have nothing. Begin to sow seed. Amen? Begin to sow those things that God has already told you to get rid of. Sow it into somebody else's life because that seed will produce in your life. Seek after God. In all you do, seek after God. Some of us have no problem spending 60, 70, 100 dollars on shoes. But oh man, it hurts when we got to do that for God. I'm just being real. Come on, we got we these things cannot control us. They cannot have authority over us. Amen. We have authority over those things. They don't control us. Amen. Pastor, can't you just move on? You're making me uncomfortable. Ha. Jesus didn't come to make you comfortable. Amen. He came to separate the truth and those that will live according to what they want to. I know this works because I am a living testimony of it. Amen. You can't come and tell me that tithing doesn't work. You can't come and tell me that offering doesn't work. Why? Because I've lived it. I've seen it. I've seen God multiply. I've seen God provide at that midnight hour. So anybody who comes to me and says, you know what? I don't believe in that. You know what? You're not coming to change my mind because my mind's already set on truth. Amen. You can't come and tell me, no, this isn't the way. I have lived it with my life. When we were in a situation where do we tithe or do we pay the bill? Am I right, Kev? He always said, we tithe. Never, we never compromise that. And you know, God always made a way. Amen. Many times, for many seasons, for a long time, felt like a long time. (laughs) But, you know, right after church, because we didn't have enough, we'd go home and eat that peanut butter and jelly because that's all we had. You don't know that because you don't need to know that because that was between God and us. Amen. Because, but you know, we saw our God faithful every single time. Now we can, we can order the steak. Amen. And not the six ounce, the eight ounce. We can order those things. But we had to be faithful with what he had put in our hand. 
You see all this construction happening. You have no idea how many times it would rain and we had to push everything because the water floods were coming into our offices. And we had to make the best of it. I am, you, I am so happy. <laughs> it would rain and literally we'd be working with umbrellas. <laughs> we didn't complain. We made the best out of the situation. We declared, you know what, Lord, we thank you because that wall's going to come down. It's going to be transformed. God, you're going to make a way. And, you know, we thank God when we had nothing. We didn't wait until we had something to thank God. We began to thank him when it looked like there was zero in the bank account, when it looked like there was just not enough, when we kept getting calls, you know what, you got to pay your electric bill because they're going to disconnect. We, we were thanking God for things to come. Our current situation did not dictate where God was taking us. And many of you, you're speaking you're speaking death upon your situation. You cannot see beyond the current thing that you're going through right now. And I want to tell you, you have to begin to prophesy. You have to begin to speak. You have to begin to declare that your God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't wait until you see it. That's not faith. Oh, well, well, you know what, I, I just, I, well, I, when, I, when I get the check, when I get the promotion, when I get this job, that's not faith. You're walking by sight, by what you see. Faith thanks him, even when you don't see it. Faith declares the word, even when it looks contrary to the word. And we are transforming this building. But I, can I just share a little bit? Okay. But I want to tell you something. We had, we had massive leaks in these pillars. And so every time it rained, you know, the waters would just gush. And, you know, there was so much damage there. And we began construction. And as we were beginning construction, you know, I think it was this week or last week, the rains just came really, really hard, and it began, to, it began to get wet again inside. And it was coming right through the pillars. And so uh, our receptionist, Miss Anna, grabbed that sledgehammer and just began to hit that pillar to see what was causing it. And the Lord spoke to me. He has to get down deep to deal with some issues that you've been dealing with. You might look great on the outside. You might look like you've got it together. But when the rain and the storm comes, you fall apart on the inside. And so we got to uncover what's happening with the building. God is doing it here. Amen. You know, there's an uncovering. Why? Because no matter how, you, how well you build and how well you dress up and how well you quote scripture, if there's something broken on the inside, it'll continue being broken until it's dealt with. And so God right now is grabbing that sledgehammer and every wall that you have put up, it has to come down. We're going to go deep into the issues, amen. We're not going to lie to ourselves, amen. We're not going to lie to ourselves and say everything's good. We got to get down to the issue. And the issue is, where is your heart? That's really where we're going back to. Where is your heart? Many people are so confused with what's happening. You don't know what, what to believe. You don't know where to go. You don't know what. Hush. Just hear what God is saying. Hear what he's saying and obey what he's saying. But we got to go deep, amen? Because those things... We could have very easily just covered everything up, but when the rain would have come in and the storms would have come in, that rain would have gushed right back in. And that's what we're, we're, you know, we have to get real with God. 
You know, we can cover ourselves up all we want. We can go to every prayer meeting. We can go serve. We can go say the right things, do the right things. But when you're at home and it's night and that enemy is coming to deal with your mind, amen, when he's coming to deal and speak to you and tell you you're not good enough, you'll never amount to anything, you did this, you did that, guess what? God's strengthening you. God is molding you. He's, you know, where you are weak, he is strong. Amen. So your weakness becomes his victory. Where the enemy thought he had you, now you step on the enemy's head and say, uh-uh, not, not, no more. You're under my feet, devil. You have no right to my thoughts. You have no right to my mind. Amen. You are under my feet. That's weakness that you dealt with now becomes his victory. And now you can lead others out. Hallelujah. He loves you too much to keep you the same way. But you have to get real with God. Where is your heart? What are you chasing? Amen. So this morning as we pick up the tithes and offerings, just hear God. Just hear what God is saying to you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is a God of multiplication. When you say two plus two equal four, not with God. Amen. The math will never add up. You can put it down on paper and it just never makes sense because what God is doing is supernatural. It's supernatural. You have no idea how many times we put things on paper and we say, there's just not enough, there's just not enough. But God has a way of sending what you need to you. Amen. He knows how to send that raven and drop off that food for you. Amen. He knows how, how to cause those things that have been held back, those checks that you hadn't received yet, those claims that you hadn't received yet. He knows how to hold them for the right time. Amen. But we don't trust on, we don't put our trust on man's ways. We put our trust in God. He is the God of more than enough. He is an overflowing God. He's not a little God. He's a great God. Amen? With one word, he spoke and it was done. Hallelujah.